This is AB Calculus Test Number 3. This is a test we had last Thursday. In this uh, video lesson, we're going to go over problems 1, 5, 11, and 15, which were some of the easier problems that students didn't do as well as I normally would have expected. Here we have problem 1, the graph of y equals f of x of a closed interval from negative 3 to 7 is shown in the figure above. If f is continuous, on the interval 3 to 7 and differentiable on negative 3 to 7, then there exists a C between uh, negative 3 and 7 such that, and this is what we call the uh, mean value theorem. Okay, mean value theorem. All right, mean value. Theorem, okay, MVT. Sometimes we call this MVT. And what this is, what mean value theorem states, if you have a function that is continuous and differentiable between over an interval, the slope of the secant line between the endpoints, okay, let's go ahead and see if I can get this a little bit better drawn. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, this purple line is a secant line between these two points, which we're going to call input values A at x equals negative 3 and B at x equals 7. And what the mean value theorem states is that if we have a function that's continuous and differential over an interval, there exists a value... C, which I'm going to put here in blue, where the slope of the tangent line, or instantaneous rate of change, which I'm going to go draw a little tangent line and sketch in blue here, that slope of that tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. So let me just go ahead and put in secant line, secant line, tangent line, and These problems should be pretty fast, and with all the explanations, it's going to take me several minutes to work each one of these problems out, but this is going to be a 30 to 60 second type of a problem. So, if we just find the slope of this, this secant line, we will have, how do we find the slope of the secant line? Well, we have the average rate of change, or the slope of the secant line, which I'm going to abbreviate AROC is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. In this case, f of b is 2 in 7 comma 2 minus f of a, uh, negative 3 comma 4. You can't really see that with the obscuring of the purple. There we go, negative 3 comma 4. So 2 minus 4 in the numerator, and in the denominator we have uh, b minus a, b is 7, a equals negative 3, so we have minus negative 3, so we have negative 2 over 7 minus negative 3 is 10, which simplifies to negative 1 half, negative 1 fifth, oops, it's the one, half, 1 fifth, negative 1 fifth. equals negative one-fifth. So, that is going to be our answer D. More people need to get this right. Okay, one. Problem one. We're going to go to five now. If f of x equals three plus the absolute value of quantity x minus two, then f prime of two is. For this, I'm going to this really helps if we have a knowledge of our parent functions, in this case the absolute value parent function y equals y equals uh, absolute value of x. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw this, draw a little coordinate plane here. There's our y-axis, and here's going to be our x-axis. Okay. Now the absolute value function, y equals x, 
I'm going to sketch in blue here. If we go to the diagonal here, it comes down from the slope of negative 1 all the way down to our origin at 0, 0. And then from our origin, we go up with a slope of 1. So, uh, this is going to be the function y equals absolute value of x. And our slope here at the left of uh, x equals 0 is what? Equals negative 1. Our slope at the right of x equals 0 is x equals 1. x equals 1. Okay, and what is our slope right here at the origin? Well, the slope at the origin, what? Does not exist. So our answer is going to have to be either negative 1, 1, or does not exist. And so answer is D and C. We can just cross out. Now we can just translate this function. We have, inside parentheses here, x minus 2 shifts a function how many units? Two units to the right. And then this 3 plus shifts the unit what? Three units up. 1, 2, 3. And so our point of the little v, which was 0, comma 0, is now going to be at the point... 2 comma 3 and so I'm going to draw that in purple so in purple that's our little V right here coming down to the point here at 2 comma 3 and then up this way all right translation that's a translation and so at at 2 what do we have we go to 2 we go right to the point and so our slope is non-existent at this point. So basic understanding of this this particular parent function. Parent functions are really helpful and then basic translations of them. Precalculus, guys, precalculus. Okay, let's go to problem number eleven. For a car traveling speed of S miles per hour, the fuel consumption of the car, C of S, is measured in gallons per mile. What are the units of from A to B of C of S DS. Well, <laughs> what if we have a rate? Okay, if we have if we have miles per hour, I'll say MP my MPH. All right, and we are integrating, which I will call going up a level, right? we go from rate as we integrate to amount all right so we have in this instance okay if we had miles per hour and we integrated up we would end up having miles wouldn't we integration of miles per hour is going to be miles in this case, and it doesn't matter what it is, uh, in this case we have gallons per mile, and when we integrate, we are not going to be per anything, we're going to be an amount. The amount is the integration of a rate, and so what we have is answer A. A lot more people should have got this one correct. The integration of a rate is an amount. There will be no per. Anything with per, okay, we started with per. All right, we started with per, and so our integration is not going to have a per. It's just going to be an amount. This answer A is the only answer that qualifies. Problem number 15. Here we have a, an equation of uh, uh, limit limit is x approaches 3 of g of 3 minus g of x 
over 3 minus x equals negative 0 0.0628. This is a non-calculated problem, although this has this kind of the uh, sort of uh, significant figures that would indicate this could be a, a uh, calculator problem. But really, we're just interested mainly in the sign of this thing. In this case, we have negative 0 0.6828. So that's the most important thing. And also, this is what we call in the form of a definition of a derivative. Let's see if I can spell derivative right. Derivative. I don't know. I'm having trouble writing this morning. I don't know what this is. What's happening to me? Okay. Well, the derivative is the slope, and when f, in this case, uh, g, this is g, when g prime of, of, um, of x, we'll call it, is positive, we have a increasing function. In this case, we have a g prime of x is negative, in this case, negative uh, 0 0.628 and so we should know that the underlying function is decreasing. We had a number line right here and we had the point negative 0 0.0628 point, no points, yeah, 0 0.628 0 0.628 we would know that above f prime, or excuse me, g prime, we'll call this g prime, would be uh, negative, which means underlying the function would be decreasing. Okay, we don't know what happens to the left of negative 0 0.628 or to the right of negative point. Uh, negative 0 0.628, but we know at negative 0 0.628, the underlying function is decreasing. And so that is our answer. Guys, we got a Polar Express coming in. I may not see you until Wednesday. And, uh, but good luck. Stay warm. Get a blanket. Take care of yourself.